Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm so delighted to welcome my very special guest, Brad Karsh, to the show. Brad, welcome. How are you today? Thank you. I'm great. How are you? Good, good. We're longtime friends on the air, so I'm so glad that you're back on my new show. Delighted that you're here to share your expertise. But for those of our listeners who have not heard you on my show yet, I want to introduce you. Brad Karsh is president. He's also a keynote speaker and generational guru at JB Training Solutions. He's an accomplished public speaker whom I've heard many times, and he's also an author. Brad's been featured on CNN, CNBC, and Dr. Phil, and has been quoted in the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, New York Times, USA Today, and many others. He's the author of three business books, including Manager 3.0, A Millennial's Guide to Rewriting the Rules of Management. Brad, welcome. I'm so excited to talk to you about this because it is millennial palooza in my world. <laughs> I'm surrounded by some fabulous young professionals. And today we're going to call, we're going to talk specifically about Generation Z, which you call the Globals. So tell us more about that. Hard to believe, isn't it? We're already like moving past the millennials. But, I know, uh, I know. It's a little crazy. So, you know, millennials, the first millennials were born in 1981. So they're getting a little long in the tooth. And <laughs> there's been a lot of talk these days about globals, which is the generation after millennials. Now, according to the way we're looking at it, globals were born beginning in 1995. So the oldest of them are turning around 18, 19, 20 these days, and they're starting to think about the workplace. So they're hitting college, and they're going to be our next generation of workers. Some of them are going to begin to be interns in the next year or two. Right. So there's a lot of buzz about this new generation we're calling globals. Got it. So they are the up and coming. They are taking over the millennials. So what are the defining characteristics of our globals, Generation Z? Yes. Yeah. So first of all, the reason we call them global is that in my mind, they are the most both, if you will, figurative and soon to be literal global generation. So as we know, everyone's more connected now with technology. It's easy to, to have a chat like this, right? I could be in China right now and it wouldn't right. really matter. We could still be having the same discussion. And also, literally, there are some projections that in 20, 25, even 30 years, we'll be able to fly to Asia from the United States in about three hours. So this generation is going to be incredibly connected globally. We call them more multiculturally acceptance as opposed to awareness, right? Millennials are aware of multiculturalism. Globals just grew up. It's totally ingrained in who they are and what they're all about. And in this country... We are going to be more global. We are going to be more multicultural than Caucasian in, in not too long, especially the young population. Wow. So those are a few reasons we call them globals. And then, you know, it's interesting, Caroline, because they do really vary a bit from millennials on a couple fronts. So one, they're a little bit more of a realistic generation than millennials. So when you think about it, they they grew up being born in 1995. The oldest of them grew up, nine, they knew 9-11. Yeah. Uh, many of them have lived through this recession that we're going through, war in Iraq, war, war in Afghanistan. So they're a more realistic generation, a little bit less maybe entitled than or materialistic than the other millennial generation. They are a little bit more proactive as opposed to adaptive. So they're setting some of the change as opposed to adapting what's going on around them. And, and in some ways, they're sort of like what I call millennials on steroids. I mean, talk <laughs> about technology. You know, I have a, I have a three-year-old son, and when he was two, he knew how to swipe. So, I mean, they, they, have, they have it literally practically imprinted in their DNA. It's true, and I'm told that Apple tests prototypes of new technology on toddlers because it has to be that intuitive. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, like that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Brad, let's let's dig a little deeper. I've really heard that societal trends 
tend to repeat themselves. So which generation, if any, do the globals emulate? You know, who are they who are they looking to as role models? Sure. And that, and that's a great point, because when you think about it, now it's, these are, of course, a bit of a generalization. But for the most part, millennials are raised by baby boomers. Right. And for the most part, globals are going to be raised by Generation X. Mm-hmm. And, and when you compare a boomer and an Xer, you see very different things in terms of the, how they were brought up, how they were raised, how they were shaped by society, culture, technology. And as a result, the people, the children that they're raising are more reflective of them. Got so. It. Boomers, you know, they, they they were born in the 50s. It was sort of like uh, the happy days are here again, the idyllic times of the Americas. And, and they sort of brought that that upliftingness, that hopefulness to millennials. Gen Xers, we're a little, I'm a Gen Xer. We're a little more hardcore. We, we grew up in the 60s and 70s. Things were kind of rough. We were going through a lot of turmoil in this country. So as a result, globals are more reflective of that. I touched on this before, a little bit more realistic, a little bit more independent, a little bit more looking at how they can make things better, if you will, because they were raised in some uncertain times. You know, that's fascinating, and I can relate to that because I, too, am a Generation Xer, and, and I hadn't thought about that, but who are the parents of the current generation? Fascinating. Thank you for bringing that up. So, you know, the, the globals are just starting to inch their way into, you know, probably the internship and the summer job market, but soon they'll be the next generation of college students. So, what can we expect from them as they enter this workforce? Sure. So, you know, they've been they've been really involved in things from a very, very early age. And, and there are a lot of them, even more so than millennials, and certainly millennials started this trend, but more of them are becoming entrepreneurs at like 10, 11, 12 wow. years old. Wow. Uh, there's some really cool stuff there. Yeah, where they, um, Ernst and Young picked the Young Entrepreneur of the Year already from someone who is of the global generation. And, and they are, they have some real world experiences that they're going to enter the world with more so than any other generation. You know what really makes me think, though? What are the employers doing to be prepared for these globals, right? Because the millennials knocked their socks off in positive and confusing ways, right? I think the world of millennials, but it threw the employers, especially the boomers, for a loop. So what do we need to think about prepping for these kids coming into the workforce? Yeah, that, that that's a really interesting thing to think about because they do need to prepare for a generation that is a little bit different. And I think to some extent, employers might be delighted that this generation is a tad more realistic, is, is perhaps... Yeah a bit less materialistic than older generations. But I will tell you this, every time a new generation enters the workplace, we like to complain about them as employers. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when boomers started, when Gen Xers started, when millennials, what's up with the kids these days? That's right. kind of the reason. These guys are so clueless. They don't understand what they're going on. And when, you know, when I do workshops for companies on working better with the generations, I start off with that kind of thing. And I say to them, you know, let's let's get over that right now. We complained about every generation. Yeah. And 50% of it is we forget what it's like to be 21, 22, right. 23 and starting your career. So true. So we've got to be open-minded and welcome them and groom them. So I, I'd love to know, though, what is your prediction about how globals will influence our workplace? I love to hear about these new entrepreneurs, and I think about flexible schedules and, uh, you know, really utilizing technology. But what else might be coming down the pike? Well, they're, they're, they're going to be much more transparent. They're going to be a more transparent generation because they're used to growing up in a very open world where we tweet about everything. We put on Facebook what, that we had a turkey sandwich for lunch that day. We are posting what our salaries are, how much we make, what we weigh, all that sort of stuff. And they're going to take that to the nth degree. So companies need to prepare for a more transparent workplace for sure. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. They're going to... Oh, go ahead. Oh, please. I was, was going to say that, you know, the other thing that's interesting too is that I think they're going to not ask for or want, but demand inclusion, meaning mm. it's not enough to talk to a multicultural workplace. It, it's going to have to be something that they're very accustomed to and is part of what they do each and every day. Fascinating. Well, that's a good thing. It's a step in the right direction. You know what I was thinking, though, too? Our millennials are, are classically um, job hoppers, right? They, they might have a job for a year or two, and then they might move to something else. So their career path is 
is rarely linear. Any prediction about what the Globals will do in that regard? Will they move around a lot, or do you think they'll be more stable? You know, I think they're not going to be stable like our parents were, which is yeah. like, I get the job, and I'm going right. to stay for Concrete. three years. Yeah, yeah. But I think they might have a tendency to be a tad more loyal than millennials, if only because they've grown up living through and seeing what happened to their parents because of the recession, because of the economic downturns, 9-11. So they might be a little bit more appreciative of a job that they have and not be quite as willing to move. I don't think they're going to look at their careers the same way as a corporate ladder, like let must move up the ladder. Right. So I think they'll move for better opportunities, but I don't think they're necessarily inclined to jump the same exact way millennials were. Fascinating. So, Brad, I'd love to talk about your book, which I absolutely love, Manager 3.0, A Millennial's Guide to Rewriting the Rules of Management. I should say your most recent book because you are um, a prolific writer. But this guide has been a lifesaver not only for me as someone who manages millennials, but for my millennials who are really cutting their teeth, becoming great professionals. So give us a few themes of the book. Sure. Well, thank you for saying that. And really, the book is exactly, as you just said, it's for people who manage millennial managers and it's for millennial managers themselves. So it's the first book out there that really looks at what millennials will be like as they enter management positions. Again, the oldest millennials now are 31, 32, 33. And at many organizations, they're managing teams. What are they going to be like? How are they going to be better? How might they not be as good as previous generations and how do they manage in a multi-generational world? So a couple, uh, to me, the biggest theme in the book is about how millennials are so much more collaborative yeah. than other generations. So, so I grew up with a management style that was very much command and control, <laughs> meaning, right? Oh, yeah. I, I am the boss. You shall do as I say. Right. Millennials grew up much more collaboratively, more group projects, more activities together, more clubs, more sports. And they're used to managing collaboratively. They bristled. When we interviewed managers for this book, millennial managers, they bristled. And we said, what's it like to be the boss? They said, oh, I don't like that word, boss. Yeah. yeah. Right? It sounds so authoritative. They prefer to say, hey, everybody, what do you all think? Mm -hmm. And there are yeah. pros and cons to that. So on the one hand, when you manage collaboratively, you get buy-in from people. They understand what went into decisions that were made and therefore are more likely to go along with them. But on the downside, it can be rough because, if you will, sometimes they uh, they are afraid to put their stick in the mud. They're afraid to yeah. say, like, well, you guys all think this, but I think the other way, so let's go the other way. They're more inclined to say, like, nah, I don't know, let's talk about it a little bit more. Right. So it's that consensus leadership. Yeah. 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 Consensus. There's some interesting things about that that we talk a lot about in the book. So, so, Brad, break it down. G give me one great tip for a millennial trying to cut their teeth as a new leader, and then another tip for a manager who is guiding millennials on their professional path. One, one from each camp. Sure. So for millennial managers, I would say don't, don't be afraid to be the boss. Have some managerial courage. Have, be okay having those difficult conversations with people. Be okay giving constructive feedback. Recognize that there is a role to play when you take – when you take a step up in an organization, you can be inspiring. You can lead people, and it doesn't mean you have to necessarily agree with everyone on your team. So that's my advice for them. Very good. For managers of millennial managers, I would say give them some parameters. So allow them, if you will, to manage collaboratively. Allow them to make changes, but let them know what the rules are. Hey, if you want to manage collaboratively, that's great, but we have to have this decision by Friday. Excellent. Yeah, it's about that accountability and, and about that, uh, as you said, the buck stops here. Well done. Brad, it's always such a joy to have you on the show. I so appreciate your wisdom, and I have learned so many things from you that I put into practice, and, and I'm not kidding you. Your book is dog-eared and highlighted, and it's something that I use all the time. Speaking of which, how can we buy your book? Well, there's a little thing called Amazon. Yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah. So they they have it on there. You can go to our website and check it out. But the easiest way is to just go to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. You will find it there. And uh, I, uh, I appreciate anyone who goes off and takes a peek at it. Excellent. And tell us, what's your next speaking gig? Are you at Sherm this year? I am going to be at Sherm in Orlando doing a couple different presentations. So hope to see some folks there. Very good, very good. And and lastly, tell us how we can follow you online. Tell me tell me about yeah. your website. 
So um, we're at www.jbtrainingsolutions.com. You can also follow me at Brad Karsh on Twitter and at JBT Solutions on Twitter. Excellent. Brad, always a pleasure to have you on the show. I truly appreciate your time and expertise. I wish you great success and thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thanks. Take good care. And I want to thank all of you for tuning into Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.